Now that you've seen how to do this by hand, let's use Excel with the same example to figure, show you how much easier it is to do this using this tool. Now, I know a couple, a lot of you did this on the exam, but I'm going to just run through it real quick just as a refresher, reminder of, of how this all works. So again, the Flare Furniture Company is trying to find the right combinations of tables and chairs. And so up here, I'm just going to insert the two variables that I'm interested in, tables and chairs. We know that each table will give us a $70 profit, and each chair gives us a $50 profit. I like to initially for the units produced, just put in one so that I can see that my formula is working correctly. So right now, if I make one table at $70 and one chair at $50, I end up with a profit of $120. So it's very easy for me to see that that's working. All right, so let's start with our constraints. We know that our constraint number one has to do with carpentry, and constraint number two has to do with paint and varnish. So let's stick those numbers in first. So each table requires four hours of carpentry, and each table requires two hours of paint and varnish. Each chair requires three hours of carpentry and one hour of paint and varnish. I also know that in total I have 240 hours of carpentry available to me and I have 100 hours of varnish available to me. So my constraint here for carpentry has to be less than or equal to 240. And my total hours of varnish have to be less than or equal to 100. Constraint number three has to do with how many of each of these items I produce. So my tables, I just put one here for placeholder. I'm not talking about chairs, so I'm going to put zero. I have to have me greater than or equal to zero. For chairs, zero for placeholder. Chairs, let me know that's what I'm talking about. Again, greater than or equal to zero. So those are all my constraints. So the next thing I do is in Excel, and again, this is going to be different depending on the version of Excel that you're using. For the newest version of Excel, if you click on your data tab, and you come over here to Solver, I click on Solver. Let me just reset this real quick. And the first thing that I need to do is set my object objective. My objective is profit. So I'm going to click on this cell right here for my profit. And you notice that it's inserted D5. Second thing it's asking me is whether this is a max or a min. So I want this to be a max. And now, what are the variable cells? So the variable cells are these two cells right here. I'm changing the number of tables and the number of chairs that I'm going to produce. Next, I set my constraints. So I click on Add. The cell reference are these two cells right here. I'm going to do this two cells at a time because my first two involved less than or equal to. So I'm going to do those together. You'll notice this is already set to less than or equal to. And then for my constraint, I'm going to choose these two cells. And just hit enter. Now I want to add a second constraint, so I click on this add button. Again, my cell reference now are these second two cells. I want to change this to greater than or equal to, and my constraint are these last two cells. Now I click OK. Everything is set. I click on Solve. Click on OK. And you'll note now 
that my tables and chairs have the same value as they did when I did this by hand on the last slide. So that is how you use Excel Solver to do linear programming.